This is my lovely Crimson Guitars um, inlay cutting jig, um, or, or V-board as, as Larry Robinson uh, describes it. I can, I, can, I can recommend this book, um, The Art of Inlay by uh, Larry Robinson. Um, and uh, Larry Robinson's uh, version of this is much simpler. It, it's, he calls it a V-board. It is simply a board and it clamps to his desk. I think he's got a few spaces, but he works with it at about chest height, I believe. So it'd be about, about that sort of height. But the thing with his is he's put a hole in it here and he's mounted a piece of plumber's um, waste pipe. Um, which extracts from above and below the work. Now this is really important because he cuts a lot of shell, as, as I will be doing, abalone, mother of pearl, and the dust from that is really horrible and you, you do not want to, to breathe it. Um, you, you risk getting silicosis. It's, uh, it's the same sort of uh, precautions really with uh, asbestos in that uh, the, the dust is very, very sharp little particles and they will damage your lungs and cause some really horrible, horrible things to happen. So I, I really like the idea that his extracts from both above and below because clearly when you're cutting a lot of the dust is just going to be sent straight down underneath the work. And the thing with, with dust extraction is, um, is just to stop the dust getting airborne in the first place. Um, a lot of people recommend wearing respirators, but Larry works with, with uh, inlay all day long and he doesn't really want to spend all of his time wearing a respirator. It's, it's, just, it's just not comfortable. So with his arrangement, the dust is, is taken from source and it never gets airborne, so it's, it's never a problem. So I want to do something similar to Larry, but the arrangement of this with its upright makes the problem a little bit different. And I think what I want to do is I want to try and cut a hole through the rear of this, um, which means cutting quite a lot of the wood away. This, by the way, is a lump of Wenge. I don't think you normally get that in the design is, is the same as this, but I think it's usually all Sapili. Um, I think this was a special run um, during their Kickstarter appeal, I think, um, a sort of an heirloom version, although it's, it's already taken a few knocks this out. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut uh, through the back here. And I'm going to have my, my waste pipe slotted so that it will fit both half above and half below. And, uh, and hopefully um, we shall get a system very similar to Larry Robinson's where we're extracting both above and below the board. And, and the, the, uh, the, the dust port will be about here, I guess, and a little bit closer underneath. Um, whether or not I put a grill over the front, I don't know, because clearly if you've got a strong suction just by your work, you've got to be very careful you don't let the inlay pieces get sucked into the pipe. Um, I'll see whether we need a grill over it later. But that's the idea, and uh, let's, uh, let's see how it goes, and let's see if I can destroy my, my, my beautiful uh, inlay cutting jig. <laughs> I, I should say, if, if having cut all this wood away, it feels weak, um, I can always add some metal plates at the side to strengthen it, so it won't be the end of the world um, if I've, I've weakened it, but uh, <laughs> let's give it a go. I'm going to cut a slot out on each side, and to make sure I've got everything symmetrical, I have marked the circumference on a sheet of paper, which I will line up with one of my marks, and then I'll be able to mark the halfway point on the other side, having already marked the halfway point on the paper. <laughs> this is going to be horrible, it's the pipe's going to flex all over the place. Maybe once I've got it going it'll be okay. Or maybe Maybe a junior hacksaw will be better. Yes.
hoping I can just bend these up and cut them off, which I think I can do. But they probably, yeah, they'll break off. Yeah, <laughs> I went a bit astray just here. A little bit of filing to do. I've now got something which slides quite well over the top of the jig. Um, remember I wanted to come in from the back, but I don't want the, the top section to come in as far as the bottom section. The bottom section I want to go pretty much right up to the hole, but the top section I want to be a distance back. So um, maybe sort of back here. So I'm going to cut a, a section of this off so that the top comes here and the bottom comes right up to the up to the hole. And I'll cut a section off to make it easier to work with. I've now I've got to cut a hole through the back so that this will slide on and over the, uh, the top section. So I've got to cut a semicircular section out from here. I saw lighter chips and thought I was down to the baseboard, but actually I'm seeing the uh, Sapili. Now we're through to the baseboard. It's not my finest piece of carving, but it still feels very solid and we can just slot that in. So now we've got, just got to cut this off to length and put some pipe in and we're done. I need a spacer block so I'm just going to prepare this little off cut of walnut, which just happens to be the right thickness. Hopefully this will all go together. I think that 
will do rather nicely. I think that's a really useful modification. That's worked quite well. You'll have noticed there is a little gap underneath, but um, I can I can put a little bit of gaffer tape on it maybe. But the suction seems pretty good. It probably wasn't the best demo um, cutting plastic because it tends to adhere to the surfaces. It's uh, full of static, I think. But um, but the suction seems pretty good. So uh, I've got lots of abalone to cut, which will be in a forthcoming video. Um, you probably won't see me cutting it all, but um, you, you may see me attempt to inlay my logo, which is rather complicated. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope that uh, provides some inspiration for you, and we'll uh, see you in the next video. Bye!